Welcome to the Airgun Show. This week we're taking a look at the MTC Rapier Rangefinder, which features a very clever ballistic calculator. But before that, we welcome Andy Watkins to the Airgun Show team as we join him on a pigeon shoot. here today on a lovely April morning and the farmers rang me up and they've got a bit of a problem with pigeons on the right fields uh, so we're just gonna head over the other side of the farm and see if we can bag a couple plan of attack is I've shot a pigeon this morning and I'm just gonna use that as a decoy I find using live birds as decoys works far better than uh, plastic shell decoys or even plastic full-body decoys the rifle of choice today is the Air Arms S410 this one's in 2-2 We've got a Nico Sterling Game King on top with sports match mounts and um, hopefully make a bit of a dent in the pigeon population this morning and this afternoon. So uh, let's head over there now and see if we can bag a couple. We're now in the location uh, that I like to decoy from. Uh, backs onto a oil seed right field, so it's the same pigeons that we're shooting essentially, and um, we've got just sheep on here at the minute. Pigeons tend to come on here, I like it because it's flat, um, the grass is very short, so the pigeons stand out really well and grab other pigeons' attention. Not only that, we've also got the benefit of the wood behind us, so any pigeons that come in. Um, maybe don't quite fancy the decoys, but just go up for a roost. Because uh, this rifle's a carbine, we have no problem turning around and taking pigeons out from the trees behind us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set my bag down, put up a little camouflage net over this fence just to help conceal us that little bit more, and uh, hopefully shoot some pigeons. As you can see, I've put my face mask on. That'll just help conceal us that extra bit as well. So let's get out there, put out the, the bird, and... Give it, uh, give it a couple of hours. The way I prop the pigeon up is just to grab a, a little bit of a V stick and stick it in the ground and prop the pigeon's head up. I'm keeping the ranges fairly tight in today. We're 20 yards from the hedge line. That way the pigeons will just be coming in a little bit closer and because it is a bit of a blustery day, I don't want to be allowing for too much wind. Um, so best keep it close, try and keep it as humane as possible. We always want to kill the pigeons with one shot. Well, you won't often see this, but I've been using the 2-2. Um, I started off with 2-2, and um, I've had some success with it. But I, today, I just cannot get on with it. I mean, I'm just dropping low on everything. Um, I'm using the range finder, and I'm just dropping low. So I'm just going to quickly nip home, pick up the 177, uh, same rifle in 177, the 400, single shot variant and come back and hopefully do a little bit better and I'm back and I've got this it's just an air arms S400 in 177 this I've used it in HFT competitions and I know it that it's pinpoint accurate hopefully we'll have a bit more success with this the pigeon just came in couldn't get the camera on it um, the angle of the, the shot and all this brush in the way would have meant it would just not have been possible so I just took the shot and the pigeons dropped down in this field. So we can go and collect that now and pop it out as a decoy and hopefully that will attract more in. Well here we have that pigeon.
so hard to film in here. Just the amount of brush and uh, foliage there is. It's really hard to film. But I'll go and retrieve that one anyway. There we have it, there's pigeon number two. When setting out a decoy pattern, I don't tend to go for any specific remedy, like some go for the horseshoe, some go for the L shape. I just tend to go in a more random pattern, generally facing into the wind, with a little area in the middle for the pigeons to land in. So, set these two up now, got two forked sticks, and then we'll get back to the waiting game. But we've done alright so far, but not much on camera unfortunately, as yet. Well, another pigeon just came into the decoys, but uh, flew off before I had a chance to get the shot off. Just the way it goes sometimes, a bit frustrating. Um, but better to let them fly than rush the shot and wound the bird. Lovely shot. That pigeon just came in there um, on the edge of the wood. I think it must have saw the decoys in the field, swooped in and just landed on a branch. Wide open for me to shoot. Really happy with that. Let's go and get it. Well here we are then, a solid pigeon shot on camera. Shot nice and humane, nice and clean. I'm going to pop this out on the decoys and see if we can get something else. The camera battery is running a little bit low now, but we'll see how much we can squeeze out of it. Here we have him, just, uh, just there flapping, flapping from nerves. Lovely shot. Oh, Stone dead. Well, one bird just came in and uh, I was actually watching a bird further down the field. This one came in and um, I just went for the uh, sort of neck shot. Straight down, a bit of flapping around but you get that when you, when you hit them in the spine or the head. That's just the nerves. And then as he was flapping, another one flew straight in. Swung the gull onto him, brought the camera on. Um, he was facing away from me, so all down the back was just his spine and vital organs. So that's just where I went and dropped him and he barely flapped. Um, just a few flaps of the wing and he soon expired. So a couple of really nice shots there. I'm going to go and retrieve them now. Hit him right in the back there, straight through the heart and lungs. Stone dead. Jim's just come in, but it's coming over there. So I'm just going to have to do a little bit of a stalk here, not too far, just so I can get around this tree and see him. Fingers crossed, we'll have him on the deck fairly soon. There he is. I think that one's number seven today. Well the action seems to have dried up a little bit now, we've got seven birds on the ground, missed a couple of silly ones, it's lunch time so I'm going to go home have a bite to eat and uh, start plucking these pigeons. <laughs> Andy Watkins there showing that he's not just a dab hand on the target range. And now it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Don't forget to vote for shooting in the general election seven days from now. Basque has asked all shooters to use its interactive lobbying website to find out where their local candidates stand on shooting. 
Just log on, enter your postcode and email address, and you'll find out whether candidates in your constituency are pro or anti-shooting, or if their views are unknown. You can use the site to contact your local MP too, and ask for their views. Send any response you get to politics at basque.org.uk. Owning an air arms rifle has now got even easier. You can register it for a warranty online. There's a new tool on the Air Arms website to allow you to register for a 12-month warranty, covering parts, labour and return transportation. If you register, you'll also be entered into a prize draw that month to win a bundle of Air Arms goodies. Head to Air Arms' new website and register your warranty now. There were golds galore for Britain at the International Shooting Competition in Hanover this month. In the women's 10m air rifle, Jen McIntosh broke a British record on the way to winning gold and there were two Brits on the podium as Katie Gleason finished third. The following day, Jen's sister Shona won her first ever senior gold in the three-position rifle. The team also shot well enough to win gold and break the British team record by 10 whole points. And finally, as summer looms, all eyes turn to the Game Fair on the 28th to the 30th of July. This year, the Countryside Showcase event comes to Hatfield House, bringing it within reach of millions of shooters, as well as being just a short train journey from London. There'll be more than ever for air gunners to do this year. Air Arms will bring its Air Arms experience to the show, showing off Bentrest, FT and HFT, and a speed shoot competition offers prizes worth more than £800. Visit the Game Fair website and book your tickets now. That was the Air Gun Show news. This week's test item is the MTC Rapier Ballistic Rangefinder. Now we've not reviewed a rangefinder before because they tend to be much of a muchness. You point them at your target, press the button and they tell you how far away it is. However, this rangefinder does a lot more than just telling you the distance to your target. Before we take a closer look at the Clever Tech, I'll just begin by running through its basic features and specifications because even they are quite impressive. It's compact and can certainly be described as palm sized and weighing less than 180 grams or around six ounces with the battery fitted, it's certainly small and light enough to carry in a jacket pocket. It comes with a tough zip up carry case to keep it safe when it's not in use. It's also fitted with a wrist strap, which I just about managed to fit over my hand. The kit also includes a carabiner clip and you get a lens cloth. The Rapier runs on a 3 volt CR2 battery and it comes supplied with one. One feature I really like is the flip up turning handle on the battery cap. It means you don't need to use a key or coin to screw it on and off and quite frankly I reckon it should be standard issue on all kit like this. This feels like a rangefinder that should stand up to a few knocks in the field. It's splash proof and feels nice and solid in the hand. Its contours make for a comfortable grip and the soft rubberized stippled sections on the top and bottom make for a secure hold. The Rapier gives good clear viewing with its set six times magnification, which is just about perfect for lining up on targets over typical air gun ranges. It also has an adjustable eyepiece so you can tweak focus to get it perfect for your eye. Despite all the clever technology incorporated into this rangefinder, it's actually very easy to use. You press the red power button to switch it on and then press it again to ping the laser and get your range reading. It calculates distance from five meters out to 1000 meters. I've tested it with a tape out to 50 meters and I can vouch for the fact that it is very accurate. Certainly within MTC stated plus or minus one meter. Apart from showing distance to target, the Rapier's clear LCD display also shows angle of elevation. With varying gravitational pull making a big difference to air gun trajectory, this should prove to be a really useful feature when taking shots at exaggerated upward or downward angles. The black mode button cycles through the Rapier's four different modes. You then press the red button to make your choices within those modes. Press and hold the mode button 
and the first choice you get is between meters or yards on the display. Press it again and you get to select between three very practical different designs of reticle, all of which provide a great aiming point for lining up on your target. Press the mode button again and you can select whether or not the unit vibrates each time the laser is activated. Press the mode button one more time to select whether or not to disable Bluetooth functionality. And it's that Bluetooth connection that gives you access to the Rapier's very clever ballistic calculator. Download the free MTC Rapier Ballistics app and you can pair the rangefinder with your phone. And that's how you tap into the really clever stuff. Input relevant data regarding your rifle scope ammo combo and the rapier doesn't just tell you how far away the target is, it also tells you exactly where you need to aim to score a direct hit. 41 yards up one inch. Aim off instructions appear on the rapier's LCD display, on the screen of your phone and as an audio command from your phone. The kit also includes a Bluetooth earpiece and its own USB lead for charging. Connect that earpiece and you can receive aim off instructions direct to your ear. Loud enough to hear perfectly clearly, yet quiet enough not to spook your quarry. 27 yards down 0.1 inches. You can save multiple combo profiles and select from numerous aim off permutations, including inches, centimeters, mils, and even scope clicks. You can also choose which factors you want incorporated into the information that's relayed back to you, making it as simple or as advanced as you want. The ballistic calculator can also calculate point of aim adjustment for drift if you input data on wind speed and angle and it can factor in ambient weather conditions by sourcing data from online weather channels if you want it to. The MTC Rapier Ballistic Laser Rangefinder costs £249. That's not cheap, but then again it's not breathtakingly expensive when you consider all of the functionality it boasts. Now, all that tech isn't going to appeal to everybody, but then it's also a very robust and accurate laser rangefinder. And if you are a shooter who likes to take advantage of all the latest technology, this is a gadget that certainly isn't going to disappoint. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.